What's going on? Welcome back to the channel, everybody, or welcome if it's your first time here. Either way, super happy to have you with me today. I am B-Hub, and today we need to have a talk. We need to have a discussion today about accuracy. I've seen a lot of questions out there all about accuracy. How does it work? Uh, does Do I need it for my gear? Do I need it for this specific effect that my character does? All these different kind of questions. Today, I wanna tackle that and more. I wanna talk about why accuracy is so important and all of the different effects that it has in this game. So, like, what does accuracy even do? question is pretty simple and to answer it check it out you can go to one of your characters and you can click on uh, this part down here and you can scroll down to the bottom you can follow along with me at home it says influences the chance of successfully applying debuffs on enemy targets make sure that your ACC which is accuracy is much higher than your enemy's RES which is resist to give yourself the best chance of landing debuffs so in short this is kind of how it works you want your accuracy to be really high and you want it to be higher than your opponent's resist. If it is, then you have an opportunity to land a debuff. Yeah, uh, what's a debuff? So that's a really good question. And honestly, a lot of the confusion kind of relies around that question. What does count as a debuff? Now, the most common debuffs that you'll see are the ones right here that you will see a little red box that will appear under the health bar of whatever enemy it is that you are fighting. And for these debuffs, each and every one of them have a different picture so you can identify which one is which based on their picture. So this is 5% poison, 2.5% poison, HP burn, attack down, all those different kind of things. And you can identify those by the pictures. But those aren't the only debuffs that are out there. Not every single debuff has a picture that's associated with it in a little red box that goes under the enemy health bar. So what else actually counts as a debuff? Pull up some arena footage to help us get a better understanding of what is and what isn't a debuff. And as we go through this, you'll see a couple of them. So right here, decrease turn meter. That is a debuff as well as this provoke, which is the debuff that you're familiar with, right? It's a red box on your opponent. But like I said, not everything, not every single debuff has a red box that's associated with it. Now Martyr goes, and you're used to those as well, but then Raisin goes, and again, decrease turn meter. That is a debuff. And actually, Ryzen is a really good example of landing debuffs because every single one of his attacks involves a different one. So his A1 has the ability to remove a buff from an opponent. That counts as a debuff. His A2 is weaken and defense down with debuffs you're probably familiar with. And his A3 decreases the turn meter, which is also a debuff. Really, a debuff is anything that is, has a negative effect on your opponent. So all different kinds of stuff can be considered as debuffs. For instance, you're watching the like, clan boss video earlier and Bulwark has this ability to extend debuffs. And that is a debuff. Extending a debuff on your opponent counts as a debuff and you need accuracy for it. Uh, as well as, like I said with Ryzen, with, with stealing debuffs, with removing debuffs, transferring debuffs, all of those different kind of things, decreasing turn meter, anything that has a negative effect on your opponent, unless the text state states otherwise, that is considered a debuff and you need accuracy to use it. Let me take you to the tavern to continue showing what we're talking about. Take someone like Blind Seer, who on her A1 has the ability to decrease turn meter. If you look at her upgrades, it has buff debuff chance by 5%. What is the debuff that it's increasing the chance of? Well, it's decreasing the turn meter. It's actually considered a debuff, right? Same thing with Raisin, with his ability to remove random buffs. You see the exact same thing. And it's the exact same thing that you see on the ones that you are probably familiar with, like decrease defense and weaken on his A2. Same thing for Skartorsis with his A1. He has buff debuff chance of stealing a random buff from an enemy. All those things are considered debuffs. I'll show you something cool really quick that I learned the other day and I thought was pretty helpful. T take someone like Bulwark, for example, who has a skill where he can extend the duration of all debuffs on the attacker. Well, something like that actually works with Master Hexer. What Master Hexer does down here is you can read this, a 30% chance to extend any debuff cast by this champion, which means that Bulwark's ability to extend a debuff, if Master Hexer lands its 30% chance, it can increase that by another additional round. So you get one extra round and then another round all in the same debuff. That's a really interesting thing to note. 
Now, I'll let you know, in case you've seen my Boltlark guide, which I'll link below, I have him in the defensive tree in the guide. Right now, I'm running him in the support tree, and honestly, what i found is that they yield about the same results. And uh, just to give you a quick reason why I think that is, is you can't actually control how many times Bulwark gets hit. You can control somebody like Septimus, where their debuff extension works when he attacks. Now with that, the more attacks that you can make Septimus have, then the more opportunities you have to extend debuffs, which makes this way stronger, right? You can put him on a counterattack team, or you can make him really fast, or both, and he can hit the, the boss all the time and have way more opportunities to proc Master Hexer and extend debuffs. But with somebody like Bulwark, you can only go however many times that you get hit. Which is why I think that this support tree and the defense tree that I have in the video run about the same. So there's one other cool mastery and it's Sniper. Increases the chance of pl placing any debuff from skills or artifacts by 5%. Now as you've seen, a lot of things count as debuffs that maybe you didn't know they counted as debuffs. Sniper has the ability to increase the chances of them landing, obviously except for the ones that it specifies otherwise. But what about the gear? That seems to be a really big question. Do I need accuracy to land debuffs from sets like Toxic and Frost and Daze, or do they just kind of apply that on their own? So this is actually a pretty contested topic. So I went out and did my own research and I'll show you what I found. What you're about to see is a video of Veteran and Veteran is gonna be wearing the Toxic set and his accuracy is all the way down at 87. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and fight the Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss, you're supposed to have over 200 accuracy if you wanna land your debuffs consistently. And what I actually found over the course of this video is that Veteran, anytime it appears that the poison set will proc, it will land the poison debuff. But Veteran really struggles at landing the debuffs from his own skills. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna fast forward here uh, mainly because my grandma calls me right here at the end of this video. I love you, grandma. But it does break it up into two different clips. So here you go. As we continue this fight, we'll start off here. Bam. Veteran lands a poison right here at the beginning. Now I'm going to kind of fast forward so you can see a couple more of these. Uh, what you're going to see is Veteran is going to attack. The poison is going to be applied, but it's going to say resisted from his own skill. You see that happen right there. So what's happening is his debuff from his skill is being resisted because his accuracy is low, but he is placing the poison debuff because the gear and the accuracy from your own skills seem to be independent from one another. That means whenever you're wearing this gear, all that you need is to be have the all you need is to have the full set and you should be good to go. Man, look at all these poisons that he's landing from this gear. That's really handy to know. Now you know kind of what you need to land with your gear. I want to tackle one more question, and that's this. If I have a high accuracy, can I increase this percent chance of placing the debuff? And that answer is no. The only thing that can increase this chance right here has a 75% chance of placing is if you go down and you increase the skills or if you use a mastery like Sniper that specifically says increases the chance of placing the debuff. Now what accuracy does is the second half of this. So you have to win two different battles. One, you have to win this percentage chance that you will place it. The second thing that you have to do is there's then there's that battle between accuracy and resistance and whatever mitigating factors are in that algorithm. That's when your accuracy comes into place. Once you have landed this percent chance, then you have to check your accuracy versus their resistance to land your debuff. But having a higher accuracy will not increase this percentage chance. So right here as we sign off, I just want to stress this to you. Accuracy is a very important stat in this game. If you've seen my clan boss videos, you'll know that the way that I deal a ton of damage is by placing debuffs on the clan boss. It's also what helps me stay alive longer in those fights. You saw some of my arena runs earlier, and you saw that placing those debuffs is how I get so many victories with my arena team. Whether it's provoke, attack down, decrease turn meter, anything like that, that's what helps me get wins. And also, if you check out my Great Hall video, you'll see why accuracy is the thing that I think you should definitely invest in before you invest in anything else. Accuracy is the most important stat in the Great Hall for you to invest your time into. And you can check out the video for that as well. And thank you so much for watching this. If you have any additional questions, as always, hit me up in the comments. If you got something out of this, hit like and hit subscribe. 
Thank you so much for all of the help and opportunities that you provided for me. I love making these videos for you. And until next time, peace out.